Uh, does someone want to kick off and whoever added a bot or can talk to it? If they're here? Um, so D added it, but I'm speaking on his behalf. Oh, perfect. Hey, Constance. Hey, how are you guys? Um, so, um, so I kind of know only like a little bit of the connecting dots, but someone approached Matt at KubeCon about using this bot. And it's supposed to help with uh, finding doc links and like um, linking users to previously asked questions and answers. And so asking, uh, pretty much just bringing it up to the community if we want to integrate this into the Envoy Slack channel. The only caveat is, is that it's not approved by Slack security wise. And it hasn't been approved in, in like at least past six, several months. So I don't know if that's a concern for us. Mm -hmm. Chris, hey. do you have any thoughts on it? Oh yeah. Hey, Vlad. I'm, I'm the one the, uh, that said that talked to Matt, and uh, I'm the one that kind of, uh, I, I maintain the bot. So I was gonna uh, uh, DS to, to call in and like talk to you guys a little bit about it. Um, so the the one caveat, yeah, like that you guys mentioned, is that it's not approved by security. Uh, the it's not a it's not a like a thing about uh, slack it's that um so like six months ago or eight months ago or something when the bot was being created they were transitioning to a different set of uh, tokens uh the new the new type of security tokens uh at that time what they mentioned was that you know go build on this technology and then in eight months or whatever when we approve it, it'll be in the in the store um what they actually did was after that after like eight months of this they kind of went back and said actually we're not going to do these tokens we're going to do these other tokens so because of that it's not able to go in the store because of these tokens um so it's 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 one of those like you know we can battle slack a little bit about it but it's we're not trying to right now it's it's it, there's not really much benefit of, of it going into the store at this point so i mean that's why it hasn't been approved by security but in terms of like in every other aspect we can like, i can talk about security if you guys have any like you know thoughts or uh, or anything about it I guess my question from a security perspective, I mean, what would the install look like? I assume it would basically just be a number, another member on channel who could post things. So I'm not sure that, what's it's, like, does it have an additional attack vector up, above and beyond what everyone else has there? Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the way that it's installed is that it's like, actually shows up as apps. Uh, just somebody with admin permissions just grants it uh, uh, access to it. It just uses regular OAuth to, to grant permissions. Um, it doesn't, the only kind of maybe sensitive data that people assume that you, that Slack has is, is emails. Uh, we don't ask for that permission, so we don't actually get any of the emails of any of the members. Um, so the only thing that we're really, is per se time, which we actually purge after 30 days. Uh, and the only thing that we do actually keep for longer than 30 days is uh, if there's a conversation and we detect that like somebody asks a question, somebody else responds to that uh, question, we'll say like, hey, this looks useful, can we store that? So only with permission to restore. I can, I can do a demo of, of like kind of that interaction and the whole interaction if you guys want, if that makes it easier to kind of like set a level playing field for everybody around the product. Sure. That, yeah, uh, one second. So, do you guys see my Slack channel? Yep. Awesome. So, the idea here, like, this is my demo channel, but like, imagine somebody comes into the Envoy Slack and just asks a question, like, "Hey, how do I set up Zone Aware routing?" So, what Focal does is it uses AI to detect the the fact that somebody's asking a question, and it goes and looks through different uh, aspects to like find the best answer. So in this case, it's showing up as Confluence because it's my demo, but it actually just I pulled this out of Docs. Uh, and this is coming from previous Slack conversations. Um, the message is only sent directly to the person asking that question. It's not actually sent to the channel, so it doesn't really pollute the channel in any way. Um, and then we, we, we have this feedback mechanism where somebody could say that it's not helpful and this thing goes away. It's helpful and still has a question or helpful answered question. Um, and if you, the only kind of thing here is that if you click answer and helpful, uh, if you click on helpful and answer question, then we'll notify the rest of the channel that this person's question is already answered. You don't have to worry about it. Don't have to try to answer anything else. So that's the first part of it. The second part, I'm just going to kick off my demo script. Uh, uh, so uh, the idea here is that uh, imagine that there's two people talking. So in this case, like Michael and Kay. So Michael asks a question, Kay responds. Uh, so what we do there is, again, we do, so Focal not only detects the question that Michael is asking, but also detects the answer that Kay provides. Um, and then it uh, sends a message again, only visible to K in this case, it's saying to me, but it would actually send it to K. Um, and it would say like, hey, this looks like a useful question. Can we store this for the future? 
Um, and then, you know, it says like, here's the question, here's the answer. And then uh, she gets the, you know, she can ignore it, edit the question answer, and then like to provide more context or make it better or whatever. And then finally click store. And once she clicks store, it becomes available as like one of the potential sources of answers. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. So coming back to the original question of like, what do we store? The only thing we store is <clears throat> the like often, the thing where people are phone calls come. Anyway. <clears throat> often my phone calls come first to my computer, and then I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I think you made it that about us. Also, sadly. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think. Going forward, I mean, if it has to be installed by someone with admin approval of a Slack channel, um, maybe kick off an email thread to the Young Women Maintainers group and we can ask some questions about like what, what actual permissions it has because I am pretty Slack naive personally as a Googler, we use our, one of our 15 chat apps. Um, and we can just run through that. I mean, it, it looks super useful. So I think as long as the maintainers don't have security concerns, we can uh, throw it back to the community and see if anyone else does. And if they do, we could just have a separate channel for it. But I think. I think it looks pretty fantastic. Sure. So, um, um, so I think if we can just get a better handle on what else it could do if it got malicious, then. Yeah, like individual users don't have to grant it any permissions, right? Nope, just, there's just one set of admin level. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not, <clears throat> as long as it's not grabbing emails, uh, CNCF doesn't really have an issue with it. Nope. And it's already installed on a bunch of other CNCF yeah. properties, such as Kubernetes. Uh, well, sorry, what was the email you guys mentioned to email to? Uh, there is an Envoy Maintainers alias. Let me dig it up. Okay. Um, the Google Groups, I think, actually. Uh, I'll just put it in the meeting notes. OK, thanks so much. Out of the fact, cool. Um, and then, Chris, I assume reminders are you? Sure. Uh, just uh, on my end, um, all the maintainers should have received an email to submit uh, intro and deep dive topic for KubeCon in Barcelona. So I don't know who plans on attending um, uh, KubeCon in Barcelona, but we have two slots essentially available for Envoy. So try to get that done hopefully by the end of this month. Would be would be awesome. Cool. Yeah, we've been chatting about it on the Envoy Slack, I think. Uh, Lizon had said you're interested. Uh, no, I don't think I get the email. <laughs> I don't think I get the email that I will ping Chris later. If I will double check that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you should be on that list. If not, uh, I'll I'll just forward it to you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think okay. I have it either. Although I could miss it. All right. I'll send. I'll just forward it to the maintainers list and uh, go from there. Okay. And then um, the other uh, reminder was uh, it's going to be summer code season eventually. So um, that opens up officially today. So we're looking for ideas from CNCF projects. So mentors, volunteers, and so on. So if Envoy's interested, uh, there's a simple repo you could PR uh, some ideas depending um, what you have in store for any students over the summer. Yeah, and or I think that, that, that is not just locked down to maintainers. So the kind of mm -hmm. contributor contributed a substantial amount has interest, just yep. let us. Um, yeah, I'll send a reminder over the email list too next week. Yeah. Um, and then update on quick. Uh, so I guess the TLDR is quick integration started. Um, we're doing a bunch of work both on kind of a generic UDB proxy that's led by Joji over at Apple, and then um, actual quick integration, which uh, Mike Boris is working on at Google, and we'll have a bunch of the other Googlers joining in on. Um, the, you know, that'll, that'll possibly end up using the FD refactoring work that's done by Chris and the, the Cisco people. Luciano, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm going to try to pronounce your last name correctly. Um, you know, essentially we have, we have a bunch going on in, in progress. So the plan still is tentatively to use Quiche, the Google Quick Library, just because it's been vetted at scale and we spent two years working out the kinks and random zero RTT security bugs and, you know, congestion control corner cases. Um, so it'll essentially be the exact code that Google's using in-house directly ported to its own repo and then pulled into Envoy. It already, it already is designed to be uh, multi-platform and so it should adapt to the Envoy event management pretty easily. Uh, and it'll share kind of a common UDP-based listener 
um, for the generic human proxying that the, the Apple folks are working on. So we've got kind of like four or five people across three or four companies working on it right now. Uh, I can't say what the timeline is going to be because I think it's one of those things of um, as we start the work, we'll see how many unexpected gotchas there are, but I'm pretty optimistic. Um, the original kind of quick end-to-end -end integration was order of a quarter or two. And um, I think the plan again is to kind of hack something that's up and working, market and Envoy APIs as volatile. So essentially it will not have the same API guarantees that Envoy does with like the three to six month deprecation cycle, right? We want a rapid prototype. So we'll be moving things around and renaming them at will, but uh, it'll work. And it'll be essentially like a big monolithic code block that bypasses the listener filters and the L7, the, uh, the TCP filters and goes straight to kind of the HTTP codec. And then we'll retrofit in all of the, the good Envoy pluggability, um, you know, once we get the basic stuff up and working. So that's, I think, the plan. I don't know if anyone has questions. Cool. So I think that's it for today, unless anyone has anything else they want to add. See y'all in a couple of weeks. See you.